Pendleton to control power. Pendleton to control. Hey, Alex. Alex, are you there? Hey. Yo. Alex, will you... are you there? <laughs> hey, come on, Lord. I'm, I'm too young to die. Don't fool around, huh? Please. Don't. Don't be alarmed, Mr. Pendleton. You're coming with me. What do you mean I'm coming with you? Hey. Where did that come from? What's the big idea? What's going on here? I'm doing you a great favor, Mr. Pendleton. What do you mean, favor? Well, you see, you are dead, and I'm... Hey, what are you talking about? Well, I'm not exactly dead yet, but I'm going to take your soul. Hey, now, what's the matter with you? First you say I'm dead, then you're going to take my soul? What are you, some kind of a nut or something? Please, Mr. Pendleton, there's very little time. Mr. Pendleton, you are most certainly dead, else I shouldn't have taken you. Oh, oh no, 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 that don't prove nothing. You just plucked the wrong bird, pal. So will you just well, take me back and... Time to argue. I'm late as it is, so will you please come with me? Where to? Where do you think? Hey, now look, buddy, I ain't going anywhere you want me to go. Now, I'm telling you, I'm... I have to revise your opinions, Mr. Pendleton. What opinion? Passenger 3081 reporting, sir. Five passengers. Territory? Southeast of Finland. Proceed. Abilius William. Abilius William? Zabel Frederick. Zabel Fred. You've leapt from A to Z. Haven't you got anybody in between A and Z? Yes, sir. Well, call them off alphabetically. Good gracious, you've been here long enough to know the rules. Sorry, sir, my mistake. Continue. Peggy Alicia. You stop, I Peggy. Logic. What in heaven's name is that? What am I doing up in here? Mr. Pendleton, I am fast now, now, losing patience no. with you. Now, just you... resign yourself to the fact that you have nothing, absolutely nothing to say in this matter. Oh, is that so? I've got nothing to say in this matter? All right, buddy, we're going to see about that. We'll see about that. Who's in charge around here? What you in charge around trouble? here, buddy? Matthew 7013 no reporting, sir. No trouble at all, oh, sir. No trouble at all. There's going to be a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. Now, because hush. I'm, I'm not hushing. I'm going to squawk my head off. Are you the boss around here? A huh? little more respect, Mr. Pendleton. This is Mr. Jordan. Oh. Oh, it is, huh? Well, well Mr. Jordan, look, this guy tells me I'm dead. It's a yeah. very difficult case, sir. He fought me tooth and nail all the way well, look, up a, here. A guy ought to know if he's dead or not, I guess. Shouldn't he know if he's Silence. dead? Silence. Who is he? Pendleton Joseph. You see? You see, he's even got my name balled up. It's Joe Pendleton, not Pendleton Joseph. Pendleton what? Joseph. No, 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 no. You won't find me on any list because I ain't ready for whoever you want to take me. That's all. You're bound for heaven, Mr. Pendleton. You will hear the inner music of the spheres. What? You walk upon the shores of the crystal sea. Stop You'll saving be... him the place. It's against the rules. Oh. Sorry, sir. Now then, what was your occupation? Huh? What did you do, Joe? Me? Oh, I'm a, I'm a fighter. And when I ain't fighting, I'm flying. I do commercial flying. Everybody knows me. I'm the flying fighter. You were the flying fighter. I still am. There is no Pendleton Joseph listed here. You've made a mistake. Yeah, what did I tell you, wise guy? Are you, are you quite certain, sir? <laughs> You're new, aren't you? Oh, yes, sir. I was put on only this morning. Uh, of course, it happens all the way along the line with inexperienced. Collecting souls before... Oh, well. oh dear. Oh, dear me, I had no idea such a thing was possible. Oh, Mr. Pendleton, yes. I believe I owe you an apology. Ah, ah, that's all right. That's all right, mister. No harm done. 
You just take me back, we'll forget all about it. Thank I'll you, see Mr. you. Fellow. One moment. What? How did he manage to wangle that up here? Well, I couldn't get him to leave it behind, sir. Oh, I never let go of this. It's my buddy. Keeps my lungs in shape. Max Levine says Who that is I'm... Max Levine? He's my manager. Swell guy. He tells me I'm just what the fans want. You know, like Sugar Ray. What is he talking about? I have no idea, sir. What is a Sugar Ray? You're kidding. We don't kid, Mr. Pendleton. You mean to say you guys never heard of Sugar Ray? I'm afraid not. <laughs> well, you don't get around much, do you? <laughs> uh, I suppose you never heard of Jerry Mulligan either, huh? Is he another Sugar Ray? <laughs> now I know you're joking, buddy. <laughs> He's clowning. <laughs> Have the register show me the file on Pendleton, Joseph, and bring me a copy of the latest listings. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, wait a minute. No, you're not finagling me on any list because I ain't ready for this joint yet. I told you that. How in pandemonium did you manage to pick him up? Well, sir, I realize that we messengers shouldn't permit our emotions to sway us, but I, I could spare him untold agony by simply taking him off with me before his plane actually crashed. And, well, forgive me, sir, that's exactly what I did. You're a pretty good guy at that, you know that? Unpardonably presumptuous. Ready on number one, sir. Now we'll settle you. Pendleton? Joseph. Born 1932, April the 1st. Mother's name Mary, father Augustus, both withdrawn and awaiting Joseph, scheduled to join them the morning of May the 11th, 2020. Two, 2020? 2020? What? That's 60 years off yet! It seems you were a little bit premature. Sixty more years to go. <laughs> hey, you sure pulled a boat at that time, buddy boy. <laughs> take him back. Take him back? Well, certainly take him back. You collected him. We don't want him hanging around here for the next sixty years. Off with you. Oh, very well, sir. If you say so, sir. Come on. Buddy. Oh, nice to have met you, Mr. Oh, Jordan. Goodbye. It's a pleasure. Let's go. Did seven zero one three's error be a lesson to you? Exercise the proper degree of care and vigilance expected of you. Now, where were we? We were just checking in Miss Heggie, sir. Continue. Ingle Peter. Ingle Peter. Killia George. Killia George. Zabel Frederick. Zabel Frederick. Take them away. This way, please. What is it now? I'm frightfully sorry, sir. Well, what is it? But it's quite impossible to return him. Impossible? Why? Oh, oh, dear. They stopped us at the gate, sir. Yeah. <laughs> they got a message. What message? They've done an awful thing to me, Mr. Jordan. By they, he means his manager, Mr. Levine. Well, you, well, you guys had me up here gabbing. The dumb cluck took my body from the plane. Had me cremated. I shall never forgive myself, sir. Oh, wait till I get a hold of Levine. Wait till I get a hold of him. I'll, he can't go burning me up and get away with it. That's bad, you know, very bad. I feel ghastly. Well, how do you think I feel? I suppose I shall have to take charge of this. All right, Joe. I'll take you back. Oh, you can't, Mr. Jordan. You can't. Didn't we just tell you I ain't got a body anymore? I'll get you another body. Huh? Hey. Oh, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, what, what kind of a deal is this? Leave it to me. No, no, no. I'm not leaving nothing to you guys. No. You guys ain't shoving nobody's body on my body. Mm. I had my body in shape for my fight with the Alabama bomber. Well, look, Mr. Pendleton, if Mr. Jordan says he'll get you another body, rest assured it will be as good as, if not better than, your own. There ain't no better. I was built like a tank. I put in 15 consecutive years getting it into pink. And I'm not losing it just because you guys fumbled the ball. But, Joe, don't you understand? Your body doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, well, th well th that ain't my fault. Now, you guys can do anything. Now, come on, now, get busy, will you? I want my own body, nobody else's. Now, what do we have available at the moment, sir? I suppose you want to continue with your pugilistic career? You bet, you sure, and I'm gone. In, in six months, I take the bomber. Then I polish off Killer Gilbert, after which I put away K.O. Murdoch, and I'm the champ. Yeah, but look, why be champ when you can be anybody you like? A king, perhaps? Or a, a poet? A king? Or a king? Yeah? A guy like me, a king? Oh, no. 
No, 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 no. I'm just a mug. No, I, I wouldn't be good being anybody but myself. No. Now, come on, Joe. Let's have a little look round. Say, uh, you'd better leave this here until we find you another body. Okay, but you take care of that. Don't drop it and watch the read, huh? All right, now look, Mr. Jordan, I, I only want what's coming to me, what I was and what I was going to be. Nothing more, nothing less. Now, it's up to you guys, and I expect you to make good. Leave it to me. I'll do my best. All right, but I, I think you're just, you're, you're just wasting your time. Mr. We Jordan. don't mind that, yeah. Bye, Mr. Pendleton. Good luck. See you in 60 years. Yeah, I still can't get over how we get in and out of places, right through locked doors, walking past people without being seen. I could have sworn that dame saw us when we came in here. She looked straight at us. Hey, it is quite a snazzy joint. Woo. What's the matter, Mr. Jordan? You tired? A little weary. I offer you the cream of last week's crop and you turn a contemptuous nose at the lot. Oh, no, no, there wasn't a physique in the bunch. I ain't letting you palm off no second raiders on me, Mr. Jordan. Now, you got to remember, I was in the pink. That's becoming a most objectionable color. Do you mind not mentioning it again? Okay, Mr. Jordan. <laughs> you realize we've covered practically the entire universe. We're in Iceland, India, New Zealand, Austria. Just by snapping your fingers. How do you do it, Mr. Jordan? That's a trade secret. Well, who's the guy you want me to size up here? Jonathan Farnsworth. Is he dead? No. Is he going to meet up with an accident? No. Then what are we doing here? He's being murdered. Holy cow. You, you mean it's going on right now? I hope so. Who, who's doing it? Farnsworth's wife and the man she's in love with. Nice people you want me to meet. How are they doing it? They're drowning him in the bath. Oh, God, hey, come on, let's get out of here before we get mixed up. Joe, wait. The, now, look, look, Mr. Jordan. I ain't changing places with a guy who's got a wife like that hanging around. Nearly over. Hey, this place gives me the creeps. It is over. It is? You sure? Quite sure. Come on, Mr. Jordan, let's get out of here before the cops come, and then we'll be in hot... Somebody's coming. You better hide. Joe, you forget you can't be seen or heard. Who's this? Tony Abbott. Is he the guy the wife's in cahoots with? He's Farnsworth's confidential secretary. He'll be yours, but you're Farnsworth. I ain't gonna be Farnsworth. Farnsworth's wife. Uh-uh. Oh, Tony, I'm frightened. Now, there's nothing to be afraid of. What could be more natural than after a glass of warm milk, a sleeping pill or two, a very tired businessman should, uh, unfortunately, drowse off in his bath. Drowse off? <laughs> Twenty millions, my sweet. And us. Uh, of course. Hey, come on, Mr. Jordan, get Farnsworth, so let's get out of here. Hey, wait. I want you to meet a certain young woman. Nix, Nix, I want nothing to do with this bunch, Mr. Jordan. Miss Betty Logan is here, madam, to get see Mr. Yourself, Farnsworth. Show her in. Very good, sir. Hold me close, Tony. Well, whatever happens, darling, I won't be sorry. I'll be in the study. Gee, those two must be in love. If she becomes difficult, you send her in to me. Is the girl who's coming in on the murder? Judge for yourself. <laughs> Miss Logan, madam. I'm terribly sorry. I'm afraid we couldn't possibly make it this weekend. And Jonathan's absolutely swamped from work. Oh, good evening, Miss Logan. Good evening, Mrs. Farnsworth. Gee, Mr. Well, Jordan, I ain't seen anything in heaven like this. Oh, lovely. Uh, oh, Mr. Farnsworth is expecting you. He'll be right down, my dear. Thank you. What's she talking well, about? Farnsworth's dead, ain't he? So much. Quite. Well, how's he going to be right there? Oh, do sit down. Thank you very much. Uh, 
Drink? No, thank you. A uh, cigarette? Not just now. That's right, kid. Don't take anything from that dame. Oh, I, I just heard of your poor father's arrest. I'm sure Mr. Farnsworth will be able to help you. I'm not here to ask for any favors, Mrs. Farnsworth. My father's innocent. Of course. However, since he is the active head of Logan and Company, and since he did float the Bay Ridge Securities, the Bay Ridge Securities were completely controlled by your husband. My father was unaware of your anything. Your father's not a child. Surely he knew what he was doing. But he was in Europe at the time. He, he left everything in your husband's hands. You know that, and so does Mr. Abbott. Aren't you getting a bit hysterical, my dear? What kind of people are you anyway? Don't, don't you have any sense of, of decency or, or honesty or anything? My father never cheated anybody in his life. He's a... Well, perhaps you'd better tell all this to Mr. Abbott. He's uh, in the study. The girl's right. Farnsworth engineered the whole thing. Hey. 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 Hey, I don't like to see that kid in there with those two killers. She's perfectly safe. Save, save my eye, Mr. Jordan. She's in trouble. Yes, Joe. Well, do something. You guys can do anything. It's only up to Farnsworth. But what are you talking about, Mr. Jordan? He's dead. Precisely. Oh, and you want me to be Farnsworth and have a swell girl like that hate me? No, sir, Mr. Jordan, no. I'd like to help her, but not like this. There's no other way, Joe. But I I'd have to give up everything, Mr. Jordan. My fight with the bomber, a shot at the title, my private life, everything. I wouldn't be myself anymore. And if a guy isn't himself, what good is he? You will always be yourself, Joe. You'll only be using Farnsworth's body as a sort of physical covering, like putting on a new overcoat. It'll have to be a pretty good overcoat to last me 60 years. Of course, I, uh, could build the guy up uh, physically. I'm sure I? you'll do wonders with him, Joe. Mm. He'll be in the pink. Yeah, yeah, in the pink. Hey, w wait a minute. W uh, will I fit him? I, 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 I mean, will he fit me? As you are now, pure spirit, I could fit you inside a net. A big guy like me? Very comfortably. Gee, you guys sure can do tricks with us, can't you? <laughs> I... You are Mrs. Farnsworth, Mr. Adams. You're both just covering for Mr. Farnsworth. Now, I came here to see him, not you, so would you please go tell him I'm here or should I go do it myself? Don't do it, Miss Logan. You're going to get yourself mixed up in the murder. I've run for the butler. He'll announce you at once, Miss Logan. Yes, madam. Uh, would you tell Mr. Farnsworth Miss Logan is here? Very good, madam. You haven't got much time to decide, Joe. You mean... Whether I want to be Fonsworth or not? I mean whether you want to help that girl. Gee, sure I do. Only, if I do it, it'll only be temporary, won't it? If you wish. You bet I do. Okay. It's a deal. Come. Mr. Fonsworth. Can you hear me, sir? Mr. Farnsworth, is anything the matter? Answer him, Joe. Answer him. <laughs> You're Farnsworth. <laughs> you sure? Quite sure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, hold your horses, Buster. <sighs> sir, uh, Mrs. Farnsworth wanted you to come downstairs, sir. But, sir, you're not dressed. What do you mean I'm not dressed? I'll tell you, Mr. Abbott, Stephen Johnson, Miss Logan. Oh, neither can I. He's usually so prompt when a pretty face is involved. Did you want to see me?
This ain't so bad. Farnsworth fits me like a glove. A little flabby here and there, but I'll soon fix that. Do I really look like him? Of course, you are Farnsworth. Well, if a guy like you says so, it must be so. The only thing is, I, I, I still feel the same and I talk the same. I, I don't feel any different. Don't vex your mind about it, Joe. They all believe you're Farnsworth. You're doing beautifully. Yeah, must be. Well, even Betty thought I was Farnsworth. Of course. Oh, I told her, I told her I'd see you this morning and I'd get her father all straightened out. How am I going to do it, Mr. Jordan? You will find it a comparatively simple task. Will you keep an eye on me till I get the hang of things? I'll be glad to. Did you hear that? I must go. I'll be back. Oh, they're paging you, huh? <laughs> hey, Mr. Jordan, imagine what the police department... Good morning. Uh, now, look, get this. You and me are going to tangle plenty. You see? Just, we're going to tangle plenty. And stay out of my bedroom, you understand? Are you sure you're quite well? Oh, if you think there's anything the matter with me, Buster, just try these on. Go ahead. No, no, really, Mr. Farnsworth. Uh, uh, don't you think we'd better get to the business at hand? What with the market being bullish at the moment? Well, the Allison faction demand a showdown. But also, we should do something about the P&R debentures. Oh, yeah, 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 the, the, the debentures, yeah. I've been talking about those uh, with a friend of mine. Oh, you mean J.P., of course. No, just J. His name is Jordan. Jordan? Yeah, I'd like you to meet him. Soon. Well, I should like to, very much. Mm -hmm. uh, here's a memo from Gibbons. He thinks we should go long, 20 million bushels July wheat. 20 million bushels of wheat? Yes, sir. Where are we going to put it? Huh? <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> How about 10 million boxes of cornflakes? Huh? Well, you have your little joke, sir. Now, I'll tell Seriously, you what you do. This? I'll tell you what you do. Order a million gallons of sweet cream. As long as we have the wheat, we might as well use it. Huh? That's very funny. Yeah. Uh, here's the uh, Tracy Collateral Trust, sir. Uh, now, look, I don't want to talk about anything today except getting that girl Betty. I, I, I mean, Miss Fonz, uh, Miss, Fon Miss Logan straightened out. Now, what's all this business about putting her father in jail? Huh? Well, in as much as you engineered the entire hey, Now, get, get this. I had nothing to do with it, see? And I don't care what he'd done. Any guy who's got a daughter like Betty must be an all right guy. And you lay off him, you get me? You just lay off Oh. Oh, excuse me. Listen, what is the meaning of all this? Uh, I gotta have a gym. I gotta keep in trim. Darling, you, you frightened me. Well, you scare me too. Well, well, remember what the doctor told you about overexertion. Oh, I'll have this body in the pink in a week. Oh, Jonathan. I gotta take a bath. And I don't need any help from you two either, get me? Stay out of my bathroom. What do you make of it? The water must have affected his brain. Ooh. I get a cold chill just looking at him. Yes, well, I don't feel any too well myself. I was certain he was dead. Are you sure we held him under long enough? Uh, Mr. Max Levine is here to see Mr. Farnsworth, madam. He doesn't know any Levine. Shall I send him away? Uh, no. No, show him in. Very good, sir. So, he's playing games with us, hmm? Oh, Tony, I'm frightened. We must do something. Well... There'll be no bungling this time. We'll soon find out. Mr. Max Levine. Mr. Farnsworth? I'm Mr. Abbott. Oh, I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Abbott. I'm Jonathan Farnsworth's confidential secretary. Oh, I got a telegram here to come see Mr. Farnsworth. Maybe you can tell me what it's all about. Yes, probably. Uh, that is, if you'd be good enough to tell me what sort of business you're in, Mr. Levine. Oh, I'm in a fight racket. I'm a fight manager. I see he goes in for athletics. Maybe he's thinking of entering the ring. Don't be absurd. Max, you old son of a gun, how are you, baby? Am I glad to see you. You know me? Know you? I ought to know you, dirty double-crossing son of a gun. <laughs> hey, how do you like my monkey suit, huh? This is morning clothes, Mug. I got special suits in the mornings, in the afternoons, evenings. Yeah. I'm a regular store window dummy. <laughs> hey, uh, Scram. Oh, no, 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 not you, Max. You stay right here. Scram, will you? I got some private business with my pal, Max, here. Oh, I can't imagine what's come over you, darling. Yeah, well, the less you worry about me, honey, the better I like it. Take a good look at me, Max. Don't you know me? Oh, sure. Sure I know you. 
Everybody knows you, Mr. Fonsworth. No, no, where are your eyes, you dumb ox? I'm not Fonsworth. I'm Joe Pendleton. You're Joe. You're nuts, Mr. Fonsworth. Now, now, look, Max, maybe I don't look like, like Joe anymore, but I swear I'm him just the same, and it's all your fault. My fault? Yeah, yeah. If you wasn't in such a big hurry to burn my body, I wouldn't be in this fix now. Look, I, I, I'm a busy man. Now, if you're screwy, Mr. Fonsworth... Hey, now, Max, will you... Sir? Oh, Mr. Jordan, stay here. You're just the man I want you to, I want to see. I want you to explain this to Max here. Uh, this is Max Levine, my manager. He's the guy who cremated me. Oh. Max, I want you to meet Mr. Jordan. <sighs> Glad to meet you, Mr. Jordan. How about a little drink? The three of us. Oh, oh. <laughs> hey, Max is spilling it all over. No, I forgot. I forgot. You can't see him. Maybe I will after I have a couple. No, 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 you can't see him because you ain't dead yet. That's right, and I ain't nuts either. There's mine, and there's yours. Now, if this one disappears, I'm taking a taxi to the booby hatch. Excuse me, Max. I, I got to talk this over with Mr. Jordan. Oh, please. sure, Mr. Farnsworth. Mr. Jordan, Mr. Jordan, could you move something? You see, if he, if he sees you move something, then he knows somebody's over here, and I could... Then he knows that somebody's over here. Just, you just move. I'll be moving along. Oh, no, Max, come here. Sit down, will you? You're going to sit here till we talk this over. Now, sit down. Now, oh, Mr. Jordan, please, can't you help me? Can't you, can't, can't you materialize? Now, listen to me, Joe. Things are more serious than we thought. You were meant to be the next pugilistic champion of the world. And I, I knew it. I, I knew nobody could stop me. Did you hear that, Max? I'm going to be champ. You're going to make a million dollars with me, Max. I'm going to be champ. And you go burn up my body. I ought to slug you. Go on, tell me more. Tell well, me more, Mr. Isn't Jay. any more to tell you. We're searching everywhere for a specimen whose physical and pugilistic qualifications will measure up. Yeah, well, you better shake a leg because I don't want to stay in his body any longer than I have to. <laughs> what do you think, Max? I think I ought to get out of here. No, no, sit down, will you? What do you want to do, run out on a million dollars? Look, Max, you've got to believe I'm your Joe. Listen, listen, Max. You remember those airplane trips I used to take between Jersey and Omaha? Remember? Well, the last trip I took, something went fluid. This guy here, who you can't see because you ain't dead yet, he runs things up in heaven. Now, there's another guy. He pulled a, a blooper. He took me before I was dead. Now, they gotta make good. Get it? Sure. <sighs> sure I get it. Oh, I'll tell you what you ought to get. A doctor. The best there is. Well, how would I know all about this Joe if I wasn't Joe? Huh? Look, you got 40% of me. I have? Yeah. Well, that's very nice of you. And since when did you give me a piece of you? Since that time in Astoria when you saw me put away Butcher Boy McKenzie and you said I was just what the fans wanted, like Sugar Ray. Remember? Huh? And you got a sister named Rosie who ain't married yet, but she's got three kids. Hey, pipe down, will you? you want somebody to hear you? Who are you, anyway? I'm trying to tell you, I'm Joe. You're Joe. I'm in Fonsworth's body because I couldn't get back into mine. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Remember this? It's Joe's. Mm -hmm. Poor Joe. Where did you get it? I'm trying to tell you, it's mine. Listen, I'll play you something you always like to hear me play. Now listen to this. Listen. It's just like coming from the dead. <sighs> now do you believe me? You think Fonsworth could play like that? And here's something more. Remember our old grip? Huh? Joe! Oh, my Lord! 
Oh. He knows me. He knows me. Hey, Mr. Jordan, he knows me. He recognizes me. Max. Hey, Max, wake up. Max. Max, baby. You. Max. Max, speak to me. Speak to me. Joe. You're really Joe? Just inside. Outside, I'm Farnsworth, the banker. How did you get into Farnsworth? They, they put me in him after they drowned him. Uh, no, no, but it's only temporary. Maybe I'm somebody else, too. Ask your friend. Now, look. Look, if I'm going to be champ, you got to start getting busy and getting me some matches right away. First, I want the bomber. See, then I want K.O. Murdoch. I now, want him wait set. a minute. I want it to... Wait a minute. Now, maybe I think you're Joe Pendleton. I said maybe. But it's going to be awful hard to get over with the boxing commission. Regulations bar ghosts. Look, who's the logical contender for a match with the bomber? You were. I know I was, but who's now? Killer Gilbert. Match me with him. You're crazy. Killer won't meet Farnsworth, the banker. Fix it. You can do it. Me? Where am I going to get the dough? What? From you, Joe. Write a check. Yeah? Okay. <sighs> How much will you need to arrange the match? Fifty grand. Hey, that's a lot of dough. Hey, it's worth it. Okay. How do you spell Farnsworth? F-A-R-N-S-W-O-R-T-H. Hey, look at this. It's rolling right out. He's huh. got nice handwriting. <clears throat> there you go, Maxie. Suppose the bank finds out a ghost wrote this. How about that? Perfectly good. If he says so, Max, it's so. For 50 grand, I'll even take your friend's word for it. <laughs> Miss Betty Logan is here, sir. Yeah? Yeah, well, don't stand there like a dummy. Send her in. Send her in. Hey, will you sure. see her, Max? I will see her. Oh, hey, listen. You won't be able to miss her. She's great, ain't she, Mr. Jordan? Yes, Joe. Well, yeah. I got a million things to do, so I'll be running along. Okay, Max. Now, look, you get that match set. Hey, listen. Listen to me. As soon as I straighten out the girl, I'm going to shed Fawn's word. This whole thing's got me screwy. I'm going out and get good and drunk, and I'll call you as soon as I snap out of it. Okay. Can I, uh, can I drop you off someplace? No? Okay. Well, here's looking at you. I mean... <laughs> I'll call you, Joe. Yeah, okay, Max. Mr. Jordan, you know everything. Tell me, will, uh, will Betty like me? Oh, very much. Yeah? Uh, but I, I don't want her to like Farnsworth. I wanted to like me, Joe Pendleton. Don't worry about it, Joe. Go on your own. Yeah. Miss Logan is in the living room, sir. I'll be right in. I'll be right in. I'm, I'm sorry I couldn't uh, talk to you last night. It's quite all right. Oh, look, Miss Logan, don't worry about your father. I promise you, you promise that... Promise me. Hey, now, look, Miss Logan, I'm your friend. I'm the best friend you got. You don't know what I gave up just to meet you and help you. D don't worry. Is your father still in jail? As if you don't know. Yeah, I never gave anybody a wrong deal in my life, and I'm not going to start now. Look, you, you just tell me what to do. I'll do it. Do you mean that? Do you really mean that? You bet I do. It's funny you never talked like this before. Well, that's because I'm a different guy now, you see. Well, I, I can't explain it to you, Miss Logan. And, and even if I could, you wouldn't believe me. But I'm going to straighten out this business about your father right away. I don't understand what's come over you. Well, if I told you, you'd probably think I was out of my head and, and you'd be afraid of me. 
first time, I'm beginning not to be. I'm in an awful spot, too, Miss Logan. I need somebody like you. I haven't got anybody. I haven't even got myself. I don't know why, but... for some reason, I... I all of a sudden feel so happy. Yeah. You like fighters? Uh, pro uh, professional fighters, I mean. Well, I, I don't know. I've never met one. Oh, yes, you have. You just met one. And a pretty good one, too. Oh, oh, only, only you don't know. You don't know it. What, I, what I'm trying to tell you is that someday, pretty soon now, some fighter's going to come over to you and act like he's seen you before. And like, like maybe he's a friend of yours. Well, when, when he does, don't get sore. Give him a chance, because he'll be telling you the truth. And he'll be a pretty good guy. Well, what I'm trying to say is, now that I met you, I don't ever want to lose you. And, and when I'm somebody else, well, I'm... Well, Miss Logan, I gather you and my husband have finally gotten together. But we're not married. What? No, we're not. Oh, really, Jonathan? Yeah, that's right. Uh, we're not married. Uh, 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 spiritually, we're, we're not... Not spiritually? Yeah, not... Uh, I mean, not spiritually, that... Hey, Mr. Jordan, will you help me out of this? Where are you? Mr. Well, what's George? come over you, Jonathan? I don't understand you. You never have. Yeah. Yeah, you never have. Oh. <laughs> hey, uh, Mr. Jordan, will you take a walk, please? We'd like to be alone, huh? <laughs> Uh, do you like to take a walk and show me the house? Oh. I, I mean, uh, show me the... Uh, sh take a walk with me? Huh? I'd love to. Would you? Say, Ames, baby, tonight's the night. We've all sold out. Would you say that Mr. Farnsworth has a sporting chance in tonight's skirmish? What do you mean, a chance? He's a cinch. Really? Oh, yes, here. Have yourself a little bet down. Oh, thank you, sir. I will, sir. Hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. Joe. Hey, Mr. Jordan, are you here? Look, if you don't want to talk, just, just move a chair or something so I'll know you're around. Is, is that you, Mr. Jordan? Look, if, if you don't want to talk, it's all right. But, but please listen to me. Now, here's Joe sitting pretty with 20 millions in the bank. Now, he can get himself punt silly, getting to be champ. And what'll it get him? Certainly no 20 millions. Now, I'm a, I'm a businessman. I, I know what's best for Joe. After all, I got 40% of him. So, don't go hunting up any more bodies for him, okay? Mr. Levine? Mr. Jordan? Good morning. Oh, oh, it's you. That's a very interesting conversation. Yeah, but very one-sided. Mr. Farnsworth seems to have the same habit. Yeah, he gets results, I don't. Good morning, Mrs. Farnsworth. Great day for the scrap, ain't it? Hey, Joe! Hi, uh, Matt. Have you seen this, my sweet? It puts the situation very neatly. Wall Street's problem, child. What will the spectacular J.F. do next? Playboy financier declares his enterprises are making altogether too much money and proceeds to remedy the situation 
by doubling his payrolls and declaring quarterly dividends for all his employees. Oh, stop it. A few more weeks of this and you'll be a pauper. Why haven't you stopped him? Well, why haven't you? You've had ample opportunity. I haven't. He watches me like a hawk. Look at him. Great, ain't he? Put it up. Watch this with him. Oh, well, boy, oh, well, 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 I want to talk to you. Oh, I can't. I can't. i got to go way in. Oh, well, surely you can spare me a few moments. No, I uh, I can't talk to anybody before a fight. I get upset. Don't I, Max? Oh, oh, yeah. This is more important than the fight. Oh, nothing's more important. Not to me. <laughs> oh, please, dear. Will you excuse us? Hey, no, 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 no. Anything you got to say, you can say right here. But yeah, 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 come along. No, hey, no, listen. Look, i got no secrets in front of Max. Please, this is important to both of us. Yes, come along now. No, hey, Max. <laughs> Don't worry. What's that? Oh, Max. darling! You seem so afraid of being alone with me. I'll say I am. Oh, but how silly. Come, sit here. Well, close to me. I gotta go way in. Darling, don't you think it's time we were honest with each other? That's just what I want to be. Well, then, let's talk it out straight from the shoulder. We can't go on like this. Uh, we, we ain't going on like this. Right after the fight, we're splitting. Are we? Yeah. We don't belong together. I'll never let you go, Jonathan. Despite this horrible change in you, which I won't even try to understand, I still... I love you. Look, I'm going to marry Betty. As soon as I can fix it. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to straighten it out with Mr. Jordan right after this fight. Really? Yeah. Yeah, and, and don't try any funny business with me either. One false move from you and I'll hang one on your kisser, you get me? Yes, my dear, I do. I'll be very careful the next time. Imagine that, Dame. Yes. But you needn't worry about her, Mr. Pendleton. I bring good news. Oh, you know, you only bring bad news. Not this time. I finally got what you've been asking for. A truly superb specimen. Height, weight, chest expansion, biceps, reach, everything. Yeah. You'll be delighted. Oh, that's swell. Is he, uh, uh, good looking? I thought you were interested only in physical perfection. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Looks never meant anything to me before. Only, uh, uh, only now that I met Betty, I, I sort of want to look like somebody who won't be too hard on her eyes. He don't have to be a Rock Hudson, exactly, but somebody like him. Y you see, I, I can't afford to have Betty give me the go by. She's too important in my life. I see. Well, in that case, Mr. Pendleton, I'll see what I can do. Hey, hi, honey. Gee, glad to see you. I was just going down to the stadium, and then I was going to come by your house and pick you up. Jonathan, I'm so frightened. Oh, there ain't nothing to be afraid, honey. The fight's in the bag. Oh, it's not the fight, though. It's, it's a feeling that I have that, well, that somehow I might lose you. Lose me? Not a chance, honey. I'm yours for the next 60 years. Well, I don't want to think about the future. I don't even want to look too far ahead. See, I'm satisfied with everything exactly the way it is. Oh, but things are going to get better, honey. A lot better. There's going to be an important change in me. Well, how do you mean? Come here. Sit right down here. You remember what I told you about someday some fighter coming over to you and saying, Hello, Betty. And, and acting like he, he, he's seen you before yes. and he knows you. Remember? Well, don't be surprised if that don't happen pretty soon now. Well, is this fighter a friend of yours? I'll say he is. The best I got. Be nice to him, will you, honey? It's awful important. Why are you looking at me like that? I gotta memorize your face. I gotta memorize everything about you. So no matter what happens, I won't forget you. Jonathan. Yeah, but, but don't worry about a thing, honey. We got a great future ahead of us. 
You see, uh, you see, I got an in with a couple of guys who'll, uh, who'll make me anybody I want to be. Yeah, yeah. So you just tell me what kind of a guy you'd like to marry. I'll be him. The kind of a guy you are. Don't ever change. Y you mean that? You, you like me like I am, like like this, like Fonsworth. I love you. I wouldn't ever ever want anything about you change. And you'd marry me the way I am. You'd marry Fonsworth. Well, of course I would if I could. It's only... Yeah, yeah, oh, sure, sure you can, honey. Don't worry about Mrs. Fonsworth. She don't want me. She wants Tony. So if you want me just the way I am, no changes, why, it's okay with me. It's okay. And, and I'll tell the boys they can, they can get back to their jobs and they don't have to worry about anything <laughs> because I'll be satisfied to stay as Fonsworth. I will, honey. Hello, Miss Logan. Hello. Hi, Max. Any of your pals around? No. Good. Uh, now, let's get going before the commissioner gets the idea we're going to forfeit the fight. Oh, yeah. Come on, honey. We better go. Oh, uh, listen, Max. Will you take Betty down to the car? I'll meet you in a minute. Go ahead. I'm going to get my sacks. Well, well, hurry. Yeah, I will, honey. Go ahead. Take her down to the car. I'll be right with you. I'll be with you in a minute, honey. Hiya, Mr. Jordan. I was just planning to get in touch with you to tell you to stop worrying. I'm satisfied to stay as Fonsworth. Then I'm afraid I have some bad news for you, Joe. You can't use Fonsworth's body any longer. What? He's been howling about it to the registrar ever since you got into it. Oh, he has? Oh, but what's he got to squawk about, Mr. Jordan? I don't understand. Why does he... Well, I'm what is the phone the boxing commissioner now. He's no, a new I'm just buddy. going when Mr. Jordan came in. Why'd you tell those fumble bums to stop bobbing? I did. What does he want? He says I can't use Fonsworth's body anymore. Does he expect you to fight without a body? I don't know. I'm going to talk to him. Now, look, Mr. Jordan, Joe's got a tough fight on his hands tonight, see? And I don't want him upset. There isn't going to be any fight. What? What'd he say? What'd he say? He said there wasn't going to be any fight. He's not! We got $50,000! Hey, now, what's your idea, Mr. Jordan? Farnsworth objects, he abhors pugilism. What goes on? Will you please let me in on this? Tell Mr. Levine to call off the fight. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Jordan, wait a minute, will you please? What'd he say? Now, now look, you guys got me up enough. You put me in this spot, and I'm going to stay in this spot. And you can tell Farnsworth... I'm sorry, Joe. Orders. No. Come on, Max. Hey, hey. I can't move. Something's holding me back. What do you mean you can't move? Come on. I can't move. What, are you nailed down or something? I don't know. Oh, oh, come on, Mr. Jordan. Now quit the clowning, will you? If he pulled a trick like that on you in the ring, you're a dead pigeon. I know. I'm going to handle this. Now, look, Mr. Jordan, Joe and I are satisfied just the way things are. Five white suits us fine. Now, Joe's been in training. He's got the guy's body in great shape. And so, forget the whole thing. We ain't switching. No, no, Max, look. No, you get to the, get to the stadium and meet Betty, and I'll join you later, and I'll have it out with him. But, Joe... No, 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 look, Max, you... You can't help me because you can't see Mr. Jordan and you can't hear him, so you just can't help me. Okay. But stand pat. Okay. Don't jeopardize our interests. Leave it to me, Max. You're a fine guy to do business with. No. I'll see you later. All right, Max. Yeah. Oh. Now, now, look, Mr. Jordan. Now, look. Let's get something clear. Betty loves me as Farnsworth. That's the way it's going to be. Joe, you're no more able to stop the way things are going to be than you are to halt the waves of the sea with your hand. No? Well, just let somebody separate me from Farnsworth and see what happens. I I'm sorry, Miss. Goodbye. <laughs> somebody got me. Who got me? Mrs. Fonsworth got me. Oh, call the cops. No, no, don't, don't call the cops. I'll call the cops. Mrs. Fonsworth, she got me. Don't fight, Joe. Leave Fonsworth. Oh.
Good Lord. Have I got him on my hands again? Now look, I'm a conscientious fella. I haven't got an ounce of imagination. I'm a cop. Inspector, you're gonna find this the nuttiest case you ever tackled. Will you shut up? Now the only way I break a case is to cover every possible angle methodically. That's why I gotta know everything Mr. Farnsworth did the day he disappeared. Little facts point big fingers. You ain't ever gonna solve this case without calling in a spiritualist. I told you to shut up. Now everything's been checked and cross-checked. I've been down to the mall, the hospitals. Rolling. Hotels. Joe. I've been to the railroad. Hey, Joe. Are you here? Joe. Hey, Joe. What are you doing? I'm looking for Joe. Well, who's Joe? It could be anybody. I don't know. Joe. Joe? Joe? Maybe we better call the psycho ward. Are you Joe? Levine, are you going to settle down? Not till I find Joe or his pal Jordan. Now who's Jordan? He's the guy who put Joe in Fonsworth's body. Will you sit down? Now, Miss Logan, you and Mr. Levine were sitting in Mr. Fonsworth's car in front of the house waiting for him? Yes. You were on your way to the stadium to see him weigh in for his fight with Gilbert? Yes. And you never saw or heard from him since? No. Let's see. Mrs. Farnsworth? I can only repeat that my husband's disappearance is neither mysterious nor does it surprise me in the least, not in view of his actions for several weeks previous. Mr. Farnsworth's conviction that he was a prize fighter, his sudden desire to give away his money. Oh, he was not giving it away. He, he was making restitution. Restitution? Farnsworth? Really, Miss Logan, I don't think you quite knew him. Oh, I knew him better than any of you. He was, he was good and fine and lovable. Oh, you can't possibly be referring to my husband, Miss Logan. The last time you talked to your husband, was the interview friendly? It was amicable. I'm positive that something terrible has happened to him or he'd be in touch with me. I'm sure he's been murdered. I'm sure of it. If, as you say, he's been murdered, where is the body? It's in your trunk. Of course, I could have taken the body, cut it up, put it in the trunk. Blown it over these lads. Stop it! Stop it. Oh, kill him, Betty. What's keeping Jordan so long? He's in conference with the registrar trying to get you straightened out. Well, he's been in conference a whole week now. How long does he think I can run around without a body? Patience, Mr. Pendleton. Patience. You think you're looking for Farnsworth, but you're really looking for Joe. Farnsworth is dead. He was drowned in his bathtub by his wife and that guy there three weeks ago. Oh, you're mad. You bet I'm mad. I've been all over this town looking for Joe. I've been to every racetrack, zoo, and aquarium. I've asked every horse, monkey, and fish if they were Joe. Grab him, Mike. Come on, Mike. Hold on, Mike. Hold on, Mike. Hold on, Mike. Where? Up to your joint. I'm going to have it out with the registrar myself. Now, come on. Very well. Uh, wait a minute. I'll be right back. Wait a minute. Leg over, Mike. So Mr. Farnsworth was drowned in his bathtub three weeks ago, was he? Yeah. Now, he's only been missing a week. I don't care. That's what he told me. Who? Joe. I mean, Farnsworth. When did he tell you this? Before or after he was drowned? No, let's start the whole thing all over again. A dizzy dame. All I did was take my sacks. Hello, boys. Oh, so you finally got back. Patience. I persuaded the registrar to intercede for you. Undoubtedly, he'll win Farnsworth over. He has far greater powers of persuasion than I have. By the time you fix me up, I'll be doing your joint. You lead your full life. That can't be denied, you. Look, all I want's Betty. Fix that, and I'll call everything square. I'm expecting a flash at any moment. If it's favorable, you can be Farnsworth again. Is the body still in good condition? Oh, yes, excellent. That's in the refrigerator. Then get it out of there. I'll freeze to death. I saw it with my own eyes. I was cleaning the master's room, and I just got around to, to wiping off the saxophone when somebody or something snatched it out of my hand, and it went sailing out of the room. Yeah, you're crazy. No, she ain't. That's Joe. He's here. So am I. Now come back. Sit down. Let's get on with the investigation. Now, you sit over here, miss. I want to ask you a few questions. I was to take Betty to the big fights tonight. Murdoch and Smallings. Well, how would you like to watch it on the television? It's just beginning. If you concentrate on Mr. Levine, he'll switch it on for you. Yeah? I'm concentrating. Holy smoke, it's 10 o'clock. The fight's on. Uh, hey, it worked. Can you get people to do anything you want them to do just by concentrating? That depends. 
Murdoch still crowding Smallings to the rope. Murdoch, another left hook to Smallings' jaw, followed by a jolting right hand to the body that shakes up Smallings. Murdoch sends a hard, straight jab to the champion's chin. Smallings isn't in this at all. Murdoch's doing oh just as he pleases. Murdoch is great. I know his style like Smalling a book. Yeah, he keeps, that, keeps that right hand over his, over his chest Smalling like it's asleep, and all of a sudden, quiet! Murdoch's a great fighter. How would you like to be him? Who, me? Yes. Wait a uh -huh. minute. Murdoch is down. He's down. He's flat on the canvas. The referee's having trouble getting Smallings into a neutral corner. Nobody can understand it. He must be sick. It certainly wasn't any blow Smallings delivered. I wonder what happened. He got shot. Got a bullet in the heart. They asked him to throw the fight, you know, and he refused. One, two, those dirty rats. They're, they're cutting over a dead man. Oh, I'd like to get even with those guys. You can, Joe. I'd like to get in there and finish that fight. Hey, do something, Mr. Jordan. Right? Gosh, you haven't got too much time, Joe. Okay, Mr. Jordan, but look, I only want to be Murdoch till after the fight. We've got to hurry. Oh. Wait, Betty. I'll be right back. Get up, Murdoch! Get up, you bum! He looks fine. He's full of fight. It's amazing. He was lying there like a dead man, and now he's going in for the kill. <laughs> what a fight. What a comeback for Murdoch. He looks finished, and suddenly he comes up like a dynamo. Where are you going, Levine? I'm going to follow that saxophone. Hey, oh, you put up the greatest fight of your life. Just when I was thinking you was a goner, you jumped up like a rocket at the count of nine. <laughs> I'm proud of you. Well, this Murdoch is great. I'll say you are. No, not me. I, I said Murdoch. Well, you can say it any way you like. Say it any way you like. You're the champ now. You're the champ. Hey, Cale, what's this? Saxophone. Yeah, I know that, but whose is it? It's mine. You're feeling all right, ain't you? Yeah, yeah, sure, I feel fine. Well, that's a funny, faraway look in your eye. I don't like it. What are you thinking about? Poor Kale Murdoch. Ah, oh, cut it out, will you? Well, I don't know where I go from here. I do. You're the champ now. Nothing can stop you. But I don't mind telling you, I'm glad it's over. I was plenty worried about them gorillas. Remember what they told you? I was scared stiff they was going to try to pull something funny. They did. It wasn't funny. They shot Murdoch. Yeah, see? Oh, hey. No wonder you're talking delirious. Come on, lie down here, Kale. No. You, you come on, take it easy, oh, Kale. Lie down. Okay. Now take it easy. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll go and get the doc. Oh, Where did you get that saxophone, Murdoch? <laughs> Max, Max, don't you ever know me? I... Yeah. Yeah, Max, I'm me. Joe. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> what are you doing in Murdoch's body? Take it easy. Take Come it on, easy. get out of it! Take it easy, Max. I just got a Murdoch to help him out. Well, stop jumping from body to body. Stay put. There he is, Doc. 
You got no business in here, Levine. That's what oh, you that's think. That's all right, Doc. I'm all right. Guys, you can go home. Scrap. Oh, come on, now, Sorry. being reasonable. K.O., you got a bullet in you, ain't you? Yeah, how many times I got to tell you Murdoch got the bullet? Examine his head, Doc. He's out of it. Just let me have a look at the wounds. Okay, okay. Uh, but don't go taking it out till after I'm out of this body. <laughs> you, you intend to leave this body? Sure, I don't belong in it. Holy rock of my K.O., don't talk like that, please. Go ahead, do something for him, Doc, do something. Get out of here, Levine. Now, take it easy, partner. I ain't partners with nobody. Don't be so optimistic. All right, Levine, now what about that saxophone you were following? There's the saxophone, and here is the body you're looking for. Oh, it is? Yeah. He's Fonsworth. Oh, he is? Yeah. But I'm not using Fonsworth's body now. Well, whose body are you using? Murdoch's. But I'm really Joe Pendleton. It, it, don't, don't pay any attention to Murdoch, Inspector. He was shot. The doctor's probing for the bullet now. Did you find it yet, Doc? Yes. It's in his heart. Holy yeah. Moses. Why aren't you dead? I was once. Wasn't I, Max? He sure was. I cremated his body. Now listen, will somebody make sense around here? Now take it easy, Inspector, and we'll settle this whole case for you. Go ahead, Joe. Bye. Tell him what happened. Yeah, tell me. Okay, okay, look. Don't go worrying your head about Fonsworth. Get after the lugs that shot Murdoch. Fonsworth's gonna be all right as soon as I get him out of the icebox and I get back into him. I'll invite you to his wedding. This is a fine time for you to go nuts on me. Just when we caught the title. Which reminds me, Lefty, I got 40% of them. You've got... No, 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 that's right, Lefty. He's got 40% of me. Now, could you give me a couple of aspirin tablets? Now that the case is all cleared up, Inspector? Oh, sure, it's all cleared up. Bondsworth is a nice box. Murdoch is going to get into him and invite us all to his wedding. Now, that clears everything up fine. Now, I'm going to do a little clearing up, and I'm going to start with you, Levine. Hey, now, take it easy. Take it easy, will you, Inspector? Max had nothing to do with it. It was Mrs. Fonsworth and Tony. They drowned me, they shot me, and they, they uh, st stuck me in the icebox. Doctor, do you want to buy a screwy prize fighter, Chief? Hey, hiya, Mr. Jordan. Boy. Oh, that towel. Boy, am I glad to see you. Uh, hey, listen, fellas, will you all leave? Huh, scram, will you? I got some private business with Jordan here. <laughs> yeah, it's a good idea. All right, fella. We'll go. But don't try sneaking off with your friend Jordan. <laughs> because I'm coming back here with a nice little present for both of you. A nice little jacket you'll be crazy about. Oh, that's all right, Inspector. You don't have to give me anything. Thanks just the same. Don't mention it. Come on. I'm sure glad to see you, Mr. Jordan. Did you see the knockout? You did a good job. You made Murdoch very happy, you know. He's grateful to you. How is he? Oh, he's fine, fine. You fought beautifully. Yeah, I'm back in my old form again. Yes. This is where you belong. This is where you were meant to be. World champion. Oh, no, 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 no. Not me. Murdoch. I, I, I was glad to help him out, but now get me out of this, Mr. Jordan. Yeah? The registrar wasn't able to do anything with Farnsworth. You mean I... I can't use Farnsworth anymore? Farnsworth is adamant. Oh, gee, Mr. Jordan, what's gonna happen to me? And Betty... You won't be cheated, Joe. Nobody is. You and Murdoch are one now. You're back on your own road. No. No, I... It won't be good without Betty. I don't want those 60 years if I can't have her. You'll have everything that's ordained. No, a guy only meets a girl like her once, Mr. Jordan. I I'd be proud to be Murdoch, but I, but I got Betty Love and Farnsworth, and I gotta be him or I'll lose her. I got an idea. Now, you wait here. I'm gonna take a shower. I'm gonna talk to Farnsworth myself. I should have done this from the very beginning. You guys bollocks up everything all the time. Now, wait here. I'm gonna take a shower. I'll be right back. Don't go away. So long, Joe. Good luck, K.O. Murdoch. What's he doing now? 
With that guy Jordan in there, don't be surprised no matter what he does. Levine, you're as nuts as Murdoch. Well, he may be nuts, but he knew what he was talking about when he told me Farnsworth was in an icebox. My men found him frozen stiff. What'd he do with the body? It's down to the morgue. Well, tell him not to touch it. Joe needs that body. But what for? To get married in. To get married? He's taking a shower. Can you tie that one? Taking a shower with a bullet in his heart. How do you feel now, K.O.? Yeah, I feel kind of funny. The lefty kind of funny. I'm surprised you ain't collapsed. They found Fogboy's right. body and took it down to the morgue. Now, you and Mr. Jordan better hustle right down there. Stay out of this, Levine. Well, you may be cuckoo, Murdoch, but you certainly steered me right. We got a confession out of Mrs. Farnsworth and the boyfriend. Well, you guys must have me mixed up with somebody else. I don't know any Farnsworth. I don't remember telling you anything. Now he's lost his memory. Who's this guy, Lefty? Well, that's, that's, that's the police inspector, K.O., remember? No. What's he want? Hmm? The bullet. You, you, you remember the bullet, don't you? Well, what, 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 what happened to it? To what? The bullet. The doctor said it was right there in your heart. Hey, you must have had one too many, Lefty. No, 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 no. I saw it, I tell you. They saw it, too. Didn't you, fellas? Well, I, I, uh, I think I did. Uh... Don't hedge. You know you did. Well, it's not there now. There ain't a mark on him. It's that guy, Jordan. Who's Jordan? Jordan. Well, uh, if he ain't shot anymore, there's, uh, no use my hanging around here. Goodbye, boys. <coughs> Don't you know me? Sure. Who, who am I? You're Max Levine. Good. <laughs> and, and what's your name? I'm K.O. Murdoch. You're sure? What's the matter with this guy, Lefty? Do you know a guy named Joe? Joe Pendleton? Joe? Joe Pendleton? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You used to manage him, didn't you? Sure, I remember him. He's a funny guy. You know, he always told me he was going to take my measure, Lefty. <laughs> Whatever happened to him? He got killed in a plane crash. Oh, I'm sorry. He was a nice kid. Yeah. Yeah, he sure was. Hey, uh, Lefty, will you do me a big favor? Will you go down to Mike's and get me a big steak about that big, huh? Right. Huh? Make it rare. Yeah. Rare. Hey, uh, Levine, come here. How would you like to be associated with the champ? Huh? You mean it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. All right? Yeah. All right. Hey, go down to Mike's and sit with Lefty. I'll be with you in a minute. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Sorry, right. go ahead. Thank you. Hey, Lefty! Hey, partner! Wait for Maxie! <laughs> oh, excuse me, I'm looking for Mr. Levine. He just left. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. Yeah. Don't I know you? I don't think so. I thought maybe I did. I thought maybe I'd seen you before. Funny, isn't it? How sometimes you feel you know people? Your eyes hurt. That's nothing. But it, it's all swollen. That doesn't hurt. And your lip is cut, too. It's... Oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't know what made me do that. It felt good. Oh. You laughed pretty, Miss... Miss... Logan. Well, mine's Murdoch. Tom Murdoch, but everybody calls me K.O. You're the fighter. I'm the champ. Well, how do you do? Hi. Oh, oh I'm sorry. No, Did perfect, I hurt you? No, it's perfectly you sure? all right, really. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's fine. Uh, you interested in the fight game? I knew a man who was. Yeah? Who? Maybe I know him. Jonathan Farnsworth. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I heard about him from the boys. He, he was knocked off by his wife, wasn't he? Yes. Was he a friend of yours? I loved him. I'm 
sorry. Hey! Hey, put on those lights! Uh, don't be scared, Miss Lowry. It's perfectly all right. I'm fine. Hey! Who's there? It's me, Mr. Murdoch. The light fuse. I'll have it fixed in a minute. Oh, would you hurry it up, please? There's a young lady here. Right away. You all right, Miss Logan? I'm sorry. Yes, I'm fine. Thank you. Don't worry. You know, you know when the lights went out, I tried hard to think where I'd, where I'd seen you. You know, in the dark, your voice sounds like I've, I've heard it before, but I can't remember where. Feel anything, Miss Logan? Yes, I do. I, I feel like I'm standing someplace high up. And you're here. And you keep looking at me, and, and I keep hearing you trying to say something. Yeah. Something I feel like maybe I heard a long time ago. Maybe that's it. Maybe maybe we knew each other sometime way back. I feel I've always known you. We, we couldn't be strangers and feel the way we do, could we? Perhaps not. I think maybe I better... No, uh, please, please don't go. I, I don't know why I feel this way, but... I'd be awful lonesome if you left me now. I know I've got a lot of nerve, but if you're not doing anything, I mean, if nobody's waiting for you, would you like to have a bite with me? I know a nice little place, Mike's, just around the block where I always go after my fights. I... I want us to get better acquainted. Would you? Please, Miss Logan? Someday, pretty soon now, some fighter will come up to you and say he knows you and act like he's seen you before. But when he does, don't get sore. Give him a chance. I'd love to, Mr. Murdoch. Well, I'm in luck. <laughs> Come on, Miss Logan. Say, haven't I seen you somewhere? I asked you that, too, didn't I? Yes. We've met, Mr. Murdoch. Yeah? Well, I guess if you say so. <laughs> I don't know what's going on tonight. Is anything wrong? No. Oh, no, I should say not. No. Pretty lucky guy. I guess I was born under a lucky star. Here I am, world's light heavyweight champ. 28, I... Just met her. Well, I don't want to hurry you, but I have to close up. My work's done. I ought to be getting home. Yeah, sure, mister. Come on, Betty. Say, I've got a lot of nerve calling you Betty, haven't I? How did you know my first name? Well, you told me, didn't you? No. no? That's well, that's great. <laughs> Run along. Good luck. God bless you both. Thanks, mister. So long, K.O. Murdoch. Get the dirty jobs. Tuesday, December 13th, the DuPont Show of the Month will take great pleasure in presenting a holiday season treat for the whole family. Mary Chase's lovable, laughable, Pulitzer Prize winning play, Harvey. Art Carney's unforgettable portrayal of Elwood P. Dowd, the gentleman whose best friend was a six foot tall invisible rabbit, 
will be recreated for the television audience of America on December 13th on the DuPont Show of the Month. Be sure to watch. The Show of the Month has been brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. Maker of better things for better living through chemistry. This program was pre-recorded. Reproduction was on DuPont motion picture film and magnetic tape of DuPont Mylar polyester film. This is Joe Gibbon speaking.